boom to the hey, all you sports fans, or to you, the individuals, part of the collective, out there in the two sphere. Welcome to Fast Track Sports Rack Highlights here on Talk Radio Version of OMSR. I am your host, Will the Alternative ESPN Sports Thrill. So, what does all that catchphraseology mean? Eh, you know, sports rack, it's on display. Fast track means it's going to be pretty quickie. Although, I've been waiting for a repeat of this to show y'all for a long time. We're talking the SEC championship game, first conference championship game ever, be it a risk, back in 1992. Now, this hasn't been on the air since August. The first rendition being digitized out on digital cable from the U of ESPN was very splotchy, pixelated, you know what I mean, when uh, that upper echelon of channels, you know, above, you know, in the three-digit range, above 100, it was terrible, it was a terrible recording, and I was going to put them up, this is split up into six parts, because it was an hour-long show, so... Obviously, you're not going to take an hour-long show and, and throw it up on YouTube. You, you can't do that anymore. The point is, this was a much better broadcast. And I'm not too sure if it's going to be shown again this year because we're already halfway through the college football season. So it's great viewing, parts one through six. You got to check it out. They speak for themselves. This will be the baseline show if you haven't seen the other ones. You really should start from part one so you can see all the way through to part six. It'll make sense. It'll take you back in the Wayback Machine. All you dudes from my generation, late teens, early 20-somethings, even your 30-somethings, you know, you'll get a kick out of it. Hearing Keith Jackson, a young Der Gary Danielson, I was going to say Derek Danielson, and the intro music for ABC back then. How my, how things have changed, not only in the sense of what they were showing and how it's evolved in college football, but ABC used to show all the big games back then. Now the SEC's on CBS. Very fascinating stuff. You'll love it. We'll get a kick out of it. Shout out to my girlfriend down there in T-Town. All right. Thanks for watching. Plenty of other stuff on the channel for your entertainment needs, college football needs. Later days and more signature plays. It just seemed kind of insane. Kramer was only able to get a one-year contract from ABC to televise the game. But he convinced the schools that long-term, the plan would bring the SEC a huge payday and was worth the risk. Like the other head coaches, Florida's Steve Spurrier clearly didn't get a vote. His Gators entered the 92 season as defending conference champs, and his frustration showed. There's another uh, added excitement this year, Coach, and that we're going to the East and West Divisions. Uh, what's your thoughts on the realignment of the SEC? It's going to be interesting. Uh, the second place team that plays against the first place team has everything to gain and nothing to lose. So I don't know how it's going to work out. If you have a much better record than the other team, then uh, you've got to really play well there. And, of course, we're, the game is in Birmingham, Alabama, so whoever wins our side uh, uh, could has a good chance of maybe playing Alabama, which is their home field for three or four games a year. As Florida's quarterback in 1966, Spurrier won the school's first Heisman Trophy. After his playing days, he became a coach. Actually, in 83, he was the youngest head coach in pro football with the USFL's Tampa Bay Bandits. After that, he found a way to win a share of the ACC championship at Duke. By the time he got back to Florida in 1990, he'd refined an outside-the-box philosophy where the game was played in the air. In the SEC, it was revolutionary. And Matthews, the throw to the goal line in the end zone, touchdown! It was a, sort of an old feeling that uh, you had to run the ball and play defense if you're going to win the SEC championship. Uh, but there's no reason, if you're good at throwing the ball and can still play defense and special teams, uh, you can win that way also. He won his conference's Coach of the Year award his last two seasons at Duke and his first two at Florida. And the Gators became a force to be reckoned with. And it was something that defensive coordinators in the league were not used to seeing. People didn't know what to do. For the end zone, Jack Jackson! 
and you look at some of the scores from that era, I mean, Florida was just crushing people. It'll be for a touchdown! His mentality was, we're going to try to embarrass you. And there's no better feeling as a quarterback knowing that your coach wants to score as many points as you possibly can. Ninety one we we went we lost one game that year. Um, we went to Florida. And they ran us out of the building. Hand off to Red Brady at 25-30, has a first down, turns the corner into side territory. 35 zip. We we destroyed them right there in the right there in the swamp. We got cranked and got it going, and Alabama was back on our heels all night. We really beat them bad. Firing the ball deep down toward the end zone. He's putting it up, and it is going to be touchdown, Trey Edwards. I pull for every SEC school except any team that's close by Coast Perry. <laughs> because of that 35, for him to be throwing the ball around in the fourth quarter when they were up 28 to nothing, they had the game in hand. It, it just showed a lack of respect. And a lack of class, you know. Alabama had more than a year to chew on the loss because the Gators weren't on its schedule in 92. A shot of redemption only came because Roy Kramer had a wild idea to hold the first SEC championship game. Well, I guess I should ask the question, but what kind of a factor was it that, that Florida... Uh, did win the game the previous year and won it very handily over Alabama. I think it was in the back of all our our minds because we lost that game 35-0, if I'm not mistaken. And one of you guys, one of the players on that team, had already predicted in the newspaper that we we're going to beat Alabama 35-0. Probably rip. Uh, <laughs> and they put a whooping on us, but you know, but because they put that whooping on us, we became the team that we were when we came back here. Because of that whooping, they put on us down in Gainesville. We made a promise to ourselves that day that we would never, ever lose another football game again. Bama was the anti-Florida and celebrated the football program's 100th anniversary in 92 by playing old school. The tied offense relied on its running game while the defense pounded teams into submission. In 11 regular season games, the starters only gave up six touchdowns. I used to tell people they'd hit their mama. she put on a uniform. We led the nation in four categories defensively. We just didn't give up many points. We led the nation in run defense, pass defense, and total defense. You know, that Alabama defense in 1992 might be the best assembled defense in college football history. Head up, head on, and took him down. Both of their defensive ends were all Americans, Eric Curry and John Copeland. Copeland and Curry. I mean, they were demons on the defensive front. It was like a marriage. He made my life better on the defensive line. I made his life better. You know, we, we always say, you know, we'll meet each other at the quarterback. The chemistry between us clicked and propelled us to a level that I don't think either one of us could have reached by himself. Another star grabbed national attention in Bama's final regular season game against in-state rival Auburn. In the third quarter, Alabama's 20-game winning streak and number two ranking was hanging in the balance. We knew offensively we were stagnant and they were stagnant offensively, so some, if somebody defensively we're going to have to make a play. Second and five from the 39, Bailey checks in, play action, pass, off by Alabama. undefeated regular season. This would have right then set up only the ninth ever matchup between the number one and number two schools in a bowl game. Bama would have played top-ranked Miami, but this year, things were different.